Good evening everyone. This is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And in the previous classes, we have discussed regarding the external ear, the middle ear and the internal ear. And today we are going to discuss the ear ossicles or the small three bonds which are located in the middle ear cavity. So we will be looking into the osteology of these bonds which are the parts and we will see the attachments. So that will be the pattern of the class. So the ear ossicles are nothing but a chain of three mobile ossicles namely the malleus, incus and stapes which transfers the sound waves across the tympanic, mem tympanic cavity from the tympanic membrane to the fenestra vestibuli or the oval window. So the three bonds which are located in the middle ear cavity acts as a bridge which connects between the tympanic membrane and the oval window. So it has got two functions, the transfer of the sound waves as well as the amplification of the sound waves. So these are the three bonds. So here you can see the tympanic membrane which is connected to the malleus. This is the handle of the malleus and this is the malleus bone and this one over here is the incus bone. Then this is the stapes bone which is connected to the oval window. So the malleus bone itself is composed of five parts. So there is a head of the malleus, this upper part. So the head of the malleus is rounded and it lies in the epitympanic creases. So the middle ear cavity is divided into three parts, the epitympanum, then the mesotympanum and the hypotympanum. We have studied that in the previous class about the middle ear cavity. So the rounded head is lying in the epitympanic recess and it articulates posteriorly with the body of incus and the attachments of the superior and lateral ligaments are also happening in the head of the malleus and the second part is the neck of the malleus. So the neck of the malleus it lies against the pars flaccida. In the tympanic membrane we have seen two parts the pars tensa and pars flaccida. So the loose tympanic membrane part which lies between the anterior and posterior malleolar folds is termed as pars flaccida and the neck of the malleus is lying against the pars flaccida. It is very simple to remember and it lies medially to the corda tympani. Now the anterior process of the malleus it is connected to the petrotympanic fissure by anterior ligament. So here you can see the anterior process. It is a pointed process arising behind the neck region. Then comes the lateral process which projects from the upper end of the handle. So here this is the handle or manubrium of the malleus and the upper end of the malleus of the handle of malleus is having a small projection that is the lateral process. It provides attachment to the malleolar folds. So the lateral process is giving attachment for malleolar folds. There are two malleolar folds in the tympanic membrane, the anterior and posterior malleolar folds. So they will be correspondingly attaching to the lateral process. And the final part is the handle of malleus which extends downwards, backwards and medially and attached to the upper half of the tympanic membrane. So clearly you can see this is the handle of the malleus which is attached to the upper half of the tympanic membrane and this, this point over here is the umbo which is having the maximum convexity at the tympanic membrane that is the umbo. The second bond that is the incus bond. So the incus bond it is in the shape of an anvil and it resembles a molar teeth in appearance and it is composed of three parts. So the first bone the malleus was having five parts but here in the incus it is having only three parts to remember. They are the first one the body of incus which is a large and uh, bears an articular surface which articulates with the head of the malleus. So previously we have discussed about the articulation of the head of the malleus with the incus. So the anvil shaped incus, the body of the anvil of anvil or the incus bone articulates with the head of the malleus. 
and the second part is the long process of incus which projects downwards just behind and parallel with the handle of malleus and the final part is the lendiform nodule or the lendiform process which is directed medially and articulates with the head of the stapes. So, the incus bond will form two joints one with the malleus and the other one with the stapes. So, the body of the incus is articulating with the head of the malleus and the lendiform nodule or the lendiform process of the incus is articulating with the head of the stapes. So, it is easy to remember that. So, here you can see that representation of the incus bone which is having a body and this area which I am pointing right now is the articular facet where it forms a joint between the head of the malleus and this is the short process of the incus bone and this is the long process and this small projection is the lendicular process or lendicular nodule. So, it is otherwise known as the lendiform nodule. So, this particular part will be articulating with the head of the stapes and this facet will be articulating with the head of malleus and the third bond that is the stapes which is the smallest of them all. So, it is having the shape of a stirrup and it is smallest and it is placed most medial among the three ear ossicles and it is also having four parts. So, the first one malleus was having five parts, the incus was having three parts and the stapes is having four parts here. The first one is the head of the stapes, it is having a concave facet which articulates with the lendiform nodule of the incus or the lendic, uh, lendiform process of the incus. And the second one is the neck of the stapes, which is a narrow area which provides insertion of the posterior tendon of the stapedius. The stapedius is the smallest muscle and that will be inserted to the neck of the stapes. And it is having two limbs or two crura, which is having two handle like uh, uh, extensions and that is the anterior crura and the posterior crura. The anterior one is shorter and less curved while the posterior one is longer and there is a foot plate which is oval in shape and it fits into the oval window. So, the stapes I have told it is having two attachments one to the lendiform nodule of the incus while the foot plate of the stapes will be attached to the oval window. So, here you can see the head, the neck, the anterior crura or crest, the posterior crest and you can see a foot plate which will be connected to the oval window or fenestra vestibule eye. So, let us have a look into the joints of ear ossicles. So, previously I have told the first one the malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane and to the head of the incus and to the head of the incus. So, the first one is the incudomalleolar joint which is a saddle joint formed between the malleus and the incus. So, the first one is incudomalleolar joint which is a saddle variety of joint formed between the incus and the malleolus. And the second one is the incudostepedial joint which is formed between the incus and the head of the stapes and which is of ball and socket variety. So, incudomalleolar joint between incus and malleus which is saddle type of joint and incudostepedial joint uh, that is a ball and socket variety joint present between the incus and stapedius in incus and the stapes bone and it is surrounded by the capsular ligaments while the accessory ligaments are three for the malleus, one each for the incus and stapes which stabilizes the ossicles. So, the ossicles are held together by the capsular ligaments and the accessory ligaments which can be further classified into three for the malleus and one each for the incus and stapes. And these ligaments have a peculiarity that they are very 
extremely elastic. So, this elastic property is for the purpose of the amplification of the sound waves. So, they can vibrate more easily and it can amplify the sound to certain degree and the muscles of the middle ear. So, we have discussed about the bonds of the middle ear cavity, we have discussed about some attachments and we have discussed about the joints formed by it and finally, we will come to the muscles of the middle ear. There are two muscles in the middle ear cavity, the first one is the tensor tympani which is originating from the walls of cartilaginous part of the eustachian tube. So, I have told you from the anterior wall of the middle ear cavity, there arises a small tube which connects to the nasopharynx and that tube is called as the eustachian tube. So, from the cartilaginous part of the eustachian tube, some muscle fibers of the tensor tympani muscle arises and also there are some fibers arising from the adjoining region of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. So, these are the two points from where the fibers of tensor tympani arises and what was the function of tensor tympani as the name suggests it tenses up the tympanic membrane that is very easy to remember it tenses up the tympanic membrane and the insertion is so clear for about the tensor tympani that is the handle of the malleus near the neck and it is supplied by the mandibular nerve which creates a pulley action by tensing up the tympanic membrane. And the second muscle is the stapedius, which is originating from the inferior part of the pyramidal eminence. We have discussed about the pyramidal eminence while we explain the middle ear cavity. So, you can refer to that and the insertion of stapedius, it is attached to the back of the neck of the stapes and it is supplied by the facial nerve and the action of stapedius is opposite to that of the tensor tympani where when the stapedius contracts it will help in pushing the foot plate of the stapes to go deep into the oval window. So, it will push the stapes foot plate towards the oval window by contracting. So, that is the function of the stapedius muscle. So, these are the things you should know regarding the ear ossicles. So, we have discussed the names of the three ear ossicles, then we have discussed the functions, then we have seen individual bonds with their parts described, we have seen the joints formed between them and the muscles which are attached to these bonds. So, this concludes the ear ossicles.